Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink with another video using elements from Simon's uh, November 2022 card kit. I will link to the previous video I did unboxing the kit and using these adhesive transfers. So I'll have a link to that at the end of this video. Highly recommend watching that and then coming back to this one if you haven't seen that one because that'll make this video make more sense. So I had made a card in that video using these adhesive transfers and then I have the pieces there in the lower left of the screen. Those are the like leftovers of and like technically the trash of those adhesive transfers because I use those to make this card with the foil that also comes in the kit and you can buy the foil separately it's just deco foil however these adhesive transfers are printed on acetate and they are like laser or toner printed which will also work with this foil so you can get kind of two for one in a sense with these now, using the adhesive transfers themselves, you do not need a mink machine or a laminator. And I will actually show with one of them a little later on. However, to be able to use these like leftovers on the acetate, you do need either a mink or a laminator. It needs the heat from those in order to, you know, fuse the foil to that toner printed image. So I'm testing it out here first. I wasn't 100% sure it would work. I was pretty sure it would. And it did. Super happy. Um, my foiling results are kind of a hit and a miss. This is what I was talking about in the other video. when I was like, so me and like toner laser printed things and foil just don't really get along. <laughs> it worked for these like well enough. It wasn't perfect. But again, perfection's overrated. But it was still decent. And also for me, it was like, I was happy with any result because I was like, this was just, this is just bonus, you know, why not? So I took the pieces of foil and I cut them to the size of these leaf images. You just have to hold the acetate up to the light to make sure you're using the side that actually has the printed image because like one side was where the adhesive was so the foil won't stick. So it's not really the end of the world if you don't get it right because it'll just come off like when you pull it out of your um, the carrier sheet. If you didn't put the foil on the right side, literally nothing will happen. So then you would just flip it over, stick the foil on the right side. It's good to go. So it's another kind of one of those things where it's like, it doesn't hurt to play with it, see what happens. So I did use a bit of the very, very low tech tape that also comes in the kit. And I will have a link to the kit along with everything that's available individually, as always, in the supplies below the video. But I used the very, very low tech tape just to hold these in place since they're not sticking to adhesive like they are normally. And then again, ran them through my mink, peeled off the foil, and I've got all of these little foiled leaves on acetate. Now, the only thing that I would do differently now that I've like finished this video, made the card, I, because of what I'm doing, you can just do this. Like I'm trying, I just fussy cut them out and it was, it's a little finicky cutting acetate like this, like when you're doing like a fussy cut, but at the same time, it's also not because I'm just like, eh, you can't really see it. You know, oh, you didn't get a perfect border. Who cares? You can't, you really can't see it. So you can just cut them out like this and then like adhere them to your project. You'll have all these little foiled leaves. That's great. Um, and I'll get back to that in a second before I get to that. Those adhesive transfers, this is how you can use them without heat. You just run them through your die cut machine like you would a wafer die. So I've got my card base here and this is going to be the inside of the card. And I had one more leaf from that like full sheet that I used on the previous card. So I peeled off the backing. I stuck it into place on what will be the inside of my card. And then I have my platform. I'm using my Spellbinders Platinum 6 really any die cut machine, you would just use the same sandwich you would use for wafer dies. So I've got my platform, my cutting plates. I ran the card base through and the pressure of the machine presses out really well. So then I can peel off the adhesive transfer and the adhesive is now on the inside of this card. And then I can put the foil into place and just lightly kind of burnish that in just so it's held in place. And then I'll run that through my die cut machine in the exact same way. And the pressure from the machine will then fuse the foil 
to the adhesive transfer. So I showed in the previous video, I did the whole thing with my mink machine. This is a way to do it without. So that way you can use the adhesive transfers, but like I said, if you want to use those the leftover pieces on the acetate, that's when you need the mink machine because the pressure won't do anything. So I, after I had foiled that little leaf on the inside, I stamped a sentiment from the set that comes in the kit. This is the um, full of thanks stamp set. And then I pulled out the overlapping drops background stamp and both the sentiment and this background, I'm inking up with Simon's cappuccino ink. So I have the background stamp face up on my work surface. I inked it up with the cappuccino ink. I used a piece of Nina Desert Storm cardstock, put that in place and then just some scrap paper so I don't get ink all over me. I don't mind when I get ink all over me, but if I can prevent it, you know. So press that into place. And then of course I'm gonna add a bit of splatter. <laughs> so I've got my Gonzai Tombi Starry Colors little watercolor palette here with the gold of course and my little fan brush so work that in there and I'm going to splatter this background with that gold um, paint so once that's splattered I let that sit and completely dry so my plan for this card I was like how cute would it be to use those acetate leaves and make a shaker card specifically a flat shaker card because I love making flat shaker cards so after this background was dry like the splatter was dry I trimmed this down to about three and three quarters by five I wanted it to be smaller than my a2 card front and then I'm cutting down just some packaging that cardstock comes in I've shown this in a bunch of videos with flat shakers I will also link to a pack you can get a pack of like clear bags they're like they're over six inches wide those work perfect as well it's the same type of product um and i just linked to those because i've had people say like i don't have like packaging to use that sort of thing you can get a pack of those and there's like a hundred in the pack and then you would cut them you know you'd cut them so technically you could make like 200 flat shakers with those so anyway links with the supplies so i did that and I don't always use an anti-static powder tool on the um, packaging when I'm doing flat shakers. I did it this time though because these leaves are all, you know, they have foil and they're on acetate. So I kind of wanted to see if it would make a difference. So I did a little bit of anti-static powder. I did wipe off any excess because it does show up quite obviously on the packaging. And you don't want that. You don't want the, like the streaks of the anti-static powder. And then I flipped over the background. So it's facing the packaging and then I'm using Simon's um, sticky tape here and I have the quarter inch width and you just put that along the perimeter and then fold up the edge of the packaging, press it into place. So I seal all three sides with that, leaving the fourth side open so I can add my elements. And this is what I was alluding to earlier. If I was to re like, if I redid this or, you know, had it figured out, the only thing different I would have done was after foiling those leaves on that acetate, I would have run these through my little Xyron machine before fussy cutting them. I would have run them through my Xyron machine to put adhesive across the back and adhere these to cardstock first, like just brown or desert storm cardstock, you know, something neutral. Adhere them to the cardstock, then fussy cut them. Only reason being is that would having them adhered to cardstock before I fussy cut would give them a little bit more weight. So then I think they would shake and move around better. Cause even with my anti-static powder, these didn't don't move around like I want them to. And I'm pretty sure it's only because of like the size and the fact that they're just acid. Like, there's no weight to them. Like they're, they're light as air, well as acetate as air. <laughs> so that's what I would do differently. So if you guys are wanting to play around with that, just keep that in mind. So, after I had all three sides sealed, I put those leaves in there and I also put some um, gold and like copper, a sequin mix. I'll have a link to the sequin mix um, that also went with all these foils. It's just very fall colors, you know, and sealed up that shaker. I'd also gold heat embossed another sentiment from that stamp set onto some of Simon's um, dark chocolate cardstock and I die cut that with a circle die and then put that same adhesive on the back of it and then press that into place on top of my shaker 
And then to adhere the shaker to my card base, I'm just using uh, one inch score tape. You can use the thinner stuff that I was using to actually make the shaker, that's fine. I just happen to have all this score tape and these rolls are enormous, so why not use them? And I also like it because they do, um, they kind of give me a little extra insurance by sealing up, you know, all the back, the, all that um, packaging is now like sealed. It ain't going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so once I've got that in place, I'm going to pop this onto my card base and that finished off this card. So the leaves do move, which I love. But again, if I could pull this apart without like shredding it, uh, I would, I like I said, I would um, adhere those leaves to cardstock as well. And then that would really make them move. But hindsight is 2020, and now you guys know. So if you decide to do something like this, it's fun. I thought that having the leaves like in the shaker was just different and it was fun to make. So like I said earlier, I will link to the previous video using the kit and making that slimline card that I gave a glimpse of earlier in this video. And then of course I will link to all the supplies I used and whatnot. So you can check that out in the description box below the video if you're interested. Thank you all so much for watching, thumbs up and commenting, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.